Baby Maggie! What do you think of this card? So just this moment, the postman rocked up with a very special package. This is AMD's Radeon 7, and it looks really good right next to Darth Jar Jar here, sporting the red and black. But one thing I want to know with this upcoming review is what games do you guys want to see tested? Let us know in the comments below. I don't have much time. I'm going to be comparing this against the RTX 2080. But here today, we're going to take some really nice shots of this card. Talk about what it features in terms of just the card itself without showing you any numbers, but also talk about some things going in with AMD versus Nvidia. But anyway, let's open this thing up and take some cool shots for you guys. So here's the graphics card right here. It looks like it is going to weigh in at 1.3 kilos roughly. So it does have a very thick and very heavy cooler. Also looks like it's got a really nice back plate. But this is this thing here that also came along with it, the AMD Radeon 7. Now I have quickly watched uh, other unboxings out there and looks like it does come with batteries, but these ones were already pre-installed. So I'm guessing this so this looks like it was a sample that got passed around and uh, in Australia it's pretty common actually to uh, juggle samples between different uh, tech review sites and media because we do get limited samples down under whether it be uh, graphics cards, CPUs or any other part but here it is right here it looks like it's got a cool LED light on the side so uh, yeah let's uh, see this thing in all its glory and uh, what kind of shots we can take for you guys but this is sitting on an AOC monitor, and that's just because uh, I just picked this up as well on a deal. 150 Aussie dollars for a 4K 28 inch uh, VA panel, I believe. So that's a really good deal. We'll talk about that in the deals hunt, but let's put this thing on here, get those shots for you guys. So here's the card here, it measures in just under 27 centimeters and uh, here's this little display here with its LED light. It uh, actually is RGB but it's pretty underpowered so I hope the graphics card doesn't perform like this LED. Uh, so we're going to be testing against the RTX 2080. Now some new things I think with this is that they have updated the VCE, that's the video coding engine as opposed to the CPU which uses like H.264 or in Nvidia's case they use the NVENC I believe for their uh, encoding on their GPUs. And so this one here, I do wanna test it out in Adobe Premiere Pro because one thing I am pretty curious about is the support in an application like Adobe. Where we do know Intel is working hand in hand with Adobe to pretty much optimize not just their CPUs for that application, but also their onboard HD graphics where you look at the recommended spec lists and graphics cards for that, you can't see many, uh, especially gaming graphics cards on Nvidia's end, and then on AMD's end, I don't even see one uh, gaming graphics card supported on the official recommendation list. But you look at Intel's CPUs, even the HD graphics, it's like all the 5000 series, all the 6000 series. Uh, and then when we look at a program like Sony Vegas, uh, when we utilize uh, graphics cards like these in their OpenCL support, as well as Nvidia with their CUDA support, they perform much faster than QuickSync in something like Vegas, for example, as opposed to QuickSync and Intel CPUs currently being top dog in Adobe Premiere Pro. So uh, they did state that they have improved performance on 25% in 
in programs like Adobe Premiere Pro. So that'll be great to see if this thing does work as sort of like a budget option for people who can't afford the Fire Pros or the Quadros, but they want something that's just absolutely beast for productivity and gaming since it does have 16 gigabytes of HBM2 on board. Uh, but another thing is they have reduced the uh, transistors from 14 nanometer to seven nanometer on this particular graphics card. And this means that they're able to get higher clock speeds. However, ironically enough, Vega 64 had 4,096 stream processors. I believe this one has 3,840. I don't know if that's some kind of cruel joke referring to true 4K versus uh, UHD on the resolutions, but they match up perfectly. But looking on the back of this card, you've got three display ports as well as a HDMI out. I'm not sure, I believe that'd be HDMI 2. And they should be DisplayPort 1.4. I'm not entirely sure, I will have to ask AMD, uh, send them an email and then get back to you guys in the review and let you know exactly what those ports are. But in terms of power connectors here, we've got two eight pin feeds and then this logo here is uh, one that lights up with that Radeon logo. Anyway guys, how well does this thing perform? How well does it overclock and also how loud are the fans? And all that juicy information will be coming in the review in a couple of days. So make sure you stay tuned with the sub box hit and those notification bells ringing. And now another thing about this graphics card too is I know it's not Navi. I know a lot of people were anticipating that AMD would just crush CES with the Navi announcements and the pricing announcements, but it is a jump down from 14 nanometer to seven nanometer. So I'm definitely curious to see how this thing performs, which I'm going to be putting it on the test bench right now and uh, checking out the performance for you guys. So let us know in the comments too, what you think of AMD with the Radeon 7 launch. Do you think the $700 price tag is okay? Or do you think it's too steep considering this will be their flagship graphics card when it is launched? And if you're in Australia, these cards will be had from 1,070 AUD. If you're in New Zealand, I think it's 1,250 New Zealand dollars and you get three games bundled with this card as well. The Devil May Cry, uh, Resident Evil 2 and also The Division 2. So that's pretty cool. But also I will say, I absolutely love the look of this graphics card. I think they've got that boxy, clean look absolutely down pat with the Radeon 7. I mean, what do you guys think of the graphics card and the way it looks? I definitely think they're getting a step up on their game, especially compared to previous graphics cards and even Vega 56 and Vega 64. And there was a rumor going around that only 5,000 of these were being made. Uh, I don't think that's the case. AMD will make these to keep up with demand if enough of them sell and if the card is good enough. Keep in mind, I don't know any performance just yet. So with that said, I'm gonna get on out of here, do some testing. And if you guys wanna see some inside news before it even hits YouTube, then be sure to check us out at Instagram Tech Yes City. And be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in another one very soon. Peace out for now, bye.